All right, part four. Now things are getting a little crazy. We've got quadratics. So first thing, ugly. As ugly as things are, ugly is still our best friend. So now I've got cosine and cosine squared, but I've got a thing and a thing squared. So I'm going to make the thing ugly. So that means our equation here is now u squared plus 3u's minus 1 equals 0. I'm just going to put a little circle around that other crap. All right. So this is a quadratic. That doesn't factor because why would it factor? So good thing I went to the u's because we get to use the quadratic formula. All right, so normally it is x equals because the equation is written in terms of x. This is written in terms of u. So our quadratic equation, I'm going to start with u equals negative b, which is 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Over to A. I'm going to be really mad if this is just a typo. Nine plus four is the square root of 13. This is not on the unit circle at all. Okay. It's okay. So negative 3 plus the square root of 13 now. No, that one would be actually. So the square root of 13 is between square root of 9 and square root of 16. So between 3 and 4. So this is 3 point something. Minus 3 now makes it point something divided by 2. It is point something. So that is technically on the unit circle. So we are going to use our calculators here. Okay, so you can be negative 3 plus the square root of 13 all over 2. You could be negative 3 minus the square root of 13 all over 2. All right, so handy dandy calculator. Get out of that game. Turn it sideways. All right. Negative 3 plus square root 13. So that is 0 0.6055 divided by 2 is 0 0.302775 blah, 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 blah ugly number. Over here, though, we are going to get something even sillier. Negative 3 minus the square root of 13 gives us a very large negative number divided by 2. It is negative 3.3 doesn't matter. Sine and cosine only ever attain values from negative 1 to 1. This guy is out of bounds literally. So there is no real number that I can plug into cosine and get negative three something. So this guy at least, whoop, gone. All right, so we rewind. U was cosine, so we are still going to go back to that. Cosine of theta is the 0 0.302775, however many. And then this is technically in radians, and technically it is plus 2 pi k. So we want to figure out what is the angle that produces that cosine. So 
what we need is the inverse cosine of that decimal. So sorry, the 2 pi k does not apply right now because we don't have theta equals, we have cosine of theta equals. So theta would equal the inverse cosine of ugly mess there. plus two pi k, so make sure your calculator's in radians. I just put mine in radians. Inverse cosine of 0 0.302775 equals 1.2. plus 2 pi k. All right. I suspect this was actually a typo. I think, uh, I don't know what I'm thinking. I think maybe it was supposed to be minus 2 instead of minus 1. That would have factored. No, it wouldn't have factored either. It is a typo. But this is the answer when it's in radians. If I add 2 pi k, it would be outside of our 0 to 2 pi range. So that crazy decimal is technically the answer. That is the only decimal plus the decimal of 2 pi, however many multiple times, are the only numbers that will satisfy this crazy equation. There's technically an extraneous root that we threw out because there were no angles that would produce that value of cosine. So, even with a typo, we can still solve the equation. I just really wish it wasn't the first quadratic in the list. That's why I think it's a typo. All right, so let's do one. I'm pretty sure this one actually will work. Two times three is six, and negative six plus one. Oh no, negative two and negative three would add to negative five. This guy will factor. All right. So we have two ugly squared minus five uglies plus three equals zero. Ugly is sine theta. Okay. So like I was saying, two times three is six. Two things that multiply to six and add to negative five. So the negative six and one does add to five. But that doesn't multiply to positive 6, so it would actually have to be negative 6 and negative 1, which that's negative 7. Wah, wah. So we go to our other guy, negative 2 and negative 3. That is negative 5. Ding, ding, ding. All right, so remember, these two guys, we're choosing them because they add to negative 5. So I'm going to make a choice substitution. And you can actually put them in any order when they're both negative, like there isn't any advantage to changing the order. They will both produce the same factoring. All right, now focus on our first two, 2u squared and 2u. They both have twos, they both have u's. So 2u times another u gets back to 2u squared. 2u, I got that whole thing, times what gets me back to minus 2u, times a minus 1. All right, and then we're going to hope to see the same u minus 1 over here. So now what's our common guy with these other two? So because this one is negative, we must factor a negative out because we need u to be the first thing in the parentheses. So now I'm asking negative 3 times what will get me back to positive 3? And that is negative 1. And there is our same minus 1s, u minus 1. So we take our common ugly minus 1, and then our leftovers would be 2 uglies minus 3. Equals 0. Just like we do with a normal quadratic, we're going to set each of those equal to zero. So u minus 1 equals zero. 
when u is 1, 2u minus 3 equals 0, add the 3 divided by 2, when u is 3 halves. All right, so I have two answers, if factored. u is sine theta, so now I'm going to bring it back up here. I have sine theta equals 1, that happens, and sine theta equals 3 halves. Nope. Sine is never bigger than 1, never smaller than negative 1. 3 halves is 1.5. It's too big. If it was the square root of 3 over 2, now we're talking. That's on the unit circle. But this is not. This is 3 over 2. So the only equation we actually have to continue with now is that the sine of theta equals 1. Where does sine equal 1? So again, I think back to my graph for the extremes. 0, 1, 0 negative 1, 0. So 0 pi over 2. There it is. Theta equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. They just want the answer between 0 and 2 pi. So there it is. So our theta is pi over 2. And that is the only angle between 0 and 2 pi that when we plug it in there for theta, we will get a true equation out. Cool. Then, of course, any multiple 2 pi added onto it, but pi over 2. So even though we get quadratics, like a lot of these, we're going to get one of the two doesn't actually give us anything useful. And we just chuck it out. Now, if it had been 2u minus 1 there, then we would have had a half, and then we would have been back in business because a half is on the unit circle. So there are some that will work nicely. All right, those were long, so I'm going to cut it here, and then we'll get to the next weird one.